Hello everybody and welcome to the Stream Native Academy with one more video where we'll take a look at how you can use the Pulsar Java library in order to create your producers and start ingesting data inside your Apache Pulsar cluster. So as you can see over here I have created a simple Java project where we have inside our pom.xml file our Pulsar client dependency and then we have uh, some boilerplate code we're going to use throughout this video. We have this app config folder, uh, class, sorry, where we have uh, basically some configuration placeholders. And then we have this uh, app utils class, which just create, uh, it contains some helper methods that we're going to use to load this uh, stock ticker CSV file, which just uh, contains some stock ticker data that we are going to ingest inside Pulsar uh, from sto for stocks from uh, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, uh, and Amazon. And uh, then we have this uh, stock ticker, which is just uh, a simple pojo for this uh, file. And then we have these interceptors that uh, we're going to review later. So without further ado, let's go and uh, create uh, a new package over here and uh, let's call it producers. And inside here, we're going to create a new Java class and uh, let's call it sync producer. And let me just create my main method. And uh, right now we are ready to start creating our application. And in general, there are uh, some steps that uh, you need to take when creating your, pro your producer applications. And the first one is that you want to instantiate a Pulsar client. And when you have the Pulsar client, when you need to create a, a Pulsar a producer. And then you, when you have your producer, you want to ingest some data. So you have to in, initiate, uh, let's call it the producer worker group, which is basically the work that, that your producer does. And finally, after we are done, we need to, cl to close all of our resources. So first things first, as we said, we need to instantiate our, our Pulsar client. And uh, the way to do, that, to do that is by using the Pulsar client uh, builder. And then we need to provide the service URL, which, which, which we have on our uh, configuration file. And it's this service URL over here. It's this one, prefix with pulsar, localhost, and uh, the port. And lastly, we just need to build our client. And let's also handle this uh, exception and let's extract it by a variable and call it pulsar client. So with our pulsar client in place, then the next thing you want to do is uh, create your producer. And the way to create your producer is from the pulsar client. And so over here, you can use a new producer. And so since we want to ingest uh, some stock to get data in there, we're going to use uh, the JSON schema for that. And the way to use the JSON schema is by using uh, this uh, JSON schema that of method. And uh, over here, you need to provide this the class and we want to use this stock to your class. And then you need to specify the topic name. And again, from our configuration, we're going to use this uh, topic, which is to called stock tickers. And uh, as you remember from the previous video, when you don't specify the tenant and the namespace, everything is created uh, on Pulsar on the public uh, and default tenant and namespace. So this is where our topic is going to live as a single partition topic. And then one thing I like to do is also provide uh, a name for my producers and let's uh, call it um, stock ticker producer. And finally, let's create it. And extract it also to a variable and let's call it a uh, simple producer. And since we have our producer in place, now we are ready to send some messages. So first of all, let's use uh, the helper method we have from the app utils class. And uh, it's this one. Let's handle the exception and extract that to a variable. Let me just 
delete that. And uh, this helper method just uh, reads uh, the data from the local file system and uh, for each line it creates a new stock ticker uh, class object and then just uh, returns a list uh, with the stock ticker data. So we have a producer, we have our data and let's see how we can set it over to Pulsar. So let's iterate over every record inside our list. And for every record, what you want to do is use your producer which you have created and you want to create a new message from that. And uh, the new message is going to be in, in a JSON format as we said. So let's specify again the JSON schema that of and provide the stock ticker class. And then uh, you can specify a bunch of options for your message, but we're going to, we won't specify the key which for our example is going to be the name. Uh, if you recall, it's either Apple, Google, Facebook, uh, or Amazon. And then we all specify, we need to specify the value, which is going to be the stock ticker object itself. And then we are going to send it. And in general, when inside this loop, you also, uh, you might want to add some print statements for debugging, but one thing, uh, I like to do is uh, use this method provided to us from the producer API and this is the intercept method which uh, takes as an argument a producer interceptor so intercept and I have already created two intercepts over here uh, we're going to review in a second but for now let's first create an instance of that and extract it to a variable and let's call it interceptor and pass it in here and what this uh, custom interceptor class basically does is it implements the producer interceptor inter interface uh, which has these four methods over here so the eligible method for default by default it returns false so you want to turn it to true so the message so that the messages are being sent and then we have this uh, before send method which is triggered before uh, each message is sent uh, to your apache pulsar broker and then uh, this on acknowledgement method which is triggered every time we get uh, an acknowledgement back from the broker and I have just added this helper method to retrieve the total messages and I have added this variable over here to count the total messages and increment them every time I get uh, an acknowledgement back so in this way we have these two methods that are being triggered and uh, provide some uh, simple print statements for debugging purposes instead of uh, adding them inside our main uh, method class and this is just uh, a preference for me I mean you might not like it so but this is the, like, the way I like to do things and as we said after you send all the messages what you want to do is close all the resources uh, that you have and it's going to be the producer as well as the pulsar client so let's close them and before we run our program what I want to do is uh, Let's go also and see how long it takes to send uh, all the messages in from our uh, file. And as you can see here, we have around uh, 30,000 uh, lines inside our file. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add some print statements over here. So let me just add a print statement here and let's just say that we are running uh, producer work loop and uh, after that let's just take uh, the current time and down here let's just also add the print statement and uh, let's also flash the results so this producer that flash method what it basically does is it makes sure that all the messages that might be kept inside uh, the internal buffer of Apache Pulsar are sent to Pulsar. So we make sure that all the messages have been sent. And uh, down here we are counting how many messages we have sent. 
So let me open uh, my terminal over here and uh, over here let me just go and start Apache Pulsar using the docker image so let me just grab the command from over here real quick and let's start our cluster and wait a few seconds for it to start and uh, in another terminal, before we run our producer over here, let's also start uh, a new consumer from the command line. So for that, I need to log into my container. And let me just uh, create a new producer uh, with a subscription. Let's call it test subscription. And we need to consume for that topic as long as we have messages. So I'm ready to run my producer as well now and let's see what happens. Yeah, we, you can see that we have successfully started sending messages to our Pulsar cluster. Um, we could rename this to stock ticker producer. And one thing to note here is you can see that uh, if you, as you can notice, you can see that we are sending one message and we just uh, wait for an, for an acknowledgement to come back before sending the next one. So everything uh, is working in a synchronous way and we're sending one message after another. So we need to wait until all the messages have been sent and you can see that right now we are around, around 6,000 and we are, we have around 30,000 messages that need to be sent to our cluster so let's see how much time this takes and see what we can do to improve on that uh, and while we wait uh, for our messages to be sent uh, let's let's talk briefly about I mean over here you saw that we're creating this pulsar client and uh, in general, the client libraries are responsible for queuing uh, all the messages until an acknowledgement uh, has been uh, received from the brokers. And uh, along with our uh, with the queuing uh, of those messages, they are also responsible for recrying with backoff. And they also support reconnection for load balancing or connection failover. And uh, in general, they also support connection pooling, batching, and uh, other aspects uh, that can improve performance and minimize the resources. So, in general, uh, Apache Pulsar can handle thousands of individual TCP connections. Uh, however, it is still inefficient to create a connection per producer or consumer. And for this, uh, the Pulsar clients implement connection pooling and uh, Pulsar is designed to multiplex multiple producers and consumers over a single connection. And uh, for a large number of producers or consumers, the default value of uh, one connection per broker can limit performance, um, as can the default of thread pools also be at one. And so in general, uh, when, you, when you create your client over here, you can also specify, for example, the number of IO threads, which uh, by default is one, and also the uh, connections per broker where a uh, connection per broker is the number of connections used uh, for each broker and the IO thread is the size of the thread pool used for creating or uh, serving connections and you can queue your, your, these parameters which uh, the default is one uh, let's say you can add to four I mean you can play around with this uh, and see what works better for you and uh, over here we have ingesting all our data in South uh, Pulsar. You might see different numbers here. Uh, it can take uh, from around uh, 90 seconds to almost three minutes, you can see here, to ingest uh, 30,000 messages, depending on your machine. Uh, and so let's see what we can do to improve on that, because thir almost three minutes for uh, almost 30,000 messages is <laughs> quite long. And again, you can see half of that time. I mean, it depends on, the, on your machine. And for that, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it ACT producer. And what I'm going to do inside this class is 
basically I'm going to seamlessly copy and paste all the code uh, over here inside here and the first thing is I'm going to change this method from send to send async to send uh, its message in an asynchronous wait and not wait for a response to come back so I'm going to delete this because since everything is uh, sent in an asynchronous way our pro program is going to terminate if we give it there and in order to close the resources I'm going to register uh, a shutdown hook over here so when I shut out the program it's going to close both my producer and pulsar client let me just remove this as well and right now in the custom producer interceptor I also have created a custom async producer interceptor uh, it only has a minor difference and the reason I did it because I need some kind of hack to measure how much time it does and so when you instantiate this class it's going to start uh, to keep the time it started and after every message it, it uh, prints how much time has passed um, for that message so we can uh, see up around how many seconds it takes for the async producer to to finish and some things I want to do here is the first by default when you run uh, when you create your producer it has batching enable and for now I want to disable it and what this basically means is that internally uh, Pulsar has this kind, uh, this uh, internal work queue where it uh, batches messages and uh, they are being sent to the broker as batches. So I want to disable that for now. And since all these messages are sending in, a, in an asynchronous way, the internal queue that uh, Pulsar has in order to give these messages might uh, be overwhelmed. So what I want to do is enable uh, the back pressure and the way to do it is by using this uh, block if q command uh, method over here and let's set it to true and I also want to, to specify the max pending messages and let's say the default is uh, 10,000 so let's change it to, to 50,000 for now and so if I were to run it again Remember, I took almost three minutes the last time, and let's see. You can see that from three minutes right now we're around two twenty two seconds. And again, uh, I'm running too many things on my on my laptop at this moment. In general, what you're going to see, uh, I assume you're going to see when you when you run the sync producer something around uh, 90 seconds and around uh, six seconds uh, when you run uh, your async producer. And let's change, uh, let's enable buzzing again, and let's see how this improves performance as well. So again, from 22 seconds with buzzing disabled. You can see that right now we have dropped to five to seven seconds. And again, if you run it on your local machine, I assume that you will see uh, something like three seconds there. So I will leave it to you to play around with it. So in this video, uh, we saw how you can create our producers in just data inside Pulsar and with these simple configurations how we can improve our new performance so play around with those uh, and see what you can get and uh, again don't forget to subscribe uh, to our channel to keep up with all the latest videos that, that are coming out feel free to post all your questions and uh, also reach out to us for whatever you need uh, to the Apache Pulsar community select channel so thank you for being here with me again today and I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you again. Bye.